Seers, they had, they were swinging the bat as well as you can swing it. So when you start to see guys start to get that front foot down, keeping those hands back and staying through the baseball, that means that the game started to slow down and these guys will be ready to do some damage well, today. Oh yeah, hopefully they can pick up where they left off. But from a player standpoint, you go from working out in an empty Comerica Park to that raucous atmosphere in San Francisco last night. Can that be overwhelming and is that something you ever get used to? Absolutely. And no, you don't get used to yeah. it, Mick. Every kid, every kid dream that, that played the game of baseball. You are excited and, and dream of being in this moment, playing in the World Series. And when you get the opportunity, there is no way that you can control those emotions, those feelings. So, and then you add 35, 40,000 people going, you're going to be excited. And so for the Tigers, it, it was overwhelming, but now they've got a chance to go through it. They'll relax a little bit today and we'll see a much better Tiger team. Better, better idea of what to expect tonight. Of course, the best way to silence those Giants fans tonight is to get to Madison Bumgarner early. San Francisco's game two starter has struggled recently. But can the Tigers count on that again tonight? We'll find out when this World Series edition of Tigers Live continues right after this. Who do we get? Do we get the bum gardener that has struggled in the playoffs, or do we get the guy that really has performed well in the regular season? Well, their manager, Bruce Bochy, is going through a lot what Jim Leland's going through with Papa Grande Valverde. Uh, he has Bumgarner. Bumgarner has been good during the regular season, but he's been horrible in the postseason. But he's going to give him here ball here tonight because he trusts him. Uh, he's one of those guys that will give the ball back to the starters that have struggled in the past. And that is something that Bruce Bochy has done all along. Bumgarner is a guy that's not going to challenge you uh, on the outside part of the play. He's going to challenge you with fastballs inside, good breaking balls down. Got a great scouting report from one of my good friends out west. They're hoping Dave Rigetti, their pitching coach, has straightened him out. Rigetti, by the way, outstanding pitching coach. Mick, here is one thing to consider. There is some history between Bumgarner and the Tigers. He pitched at Comerica Park last year, struck out nine and seven and a third, so he gave the Tigers fits in that game. We'll see if he's uh, sharp enough tonight here to uh, do the same thing. Hopefully not. Yeah, of course, uh, Barry Zito wasn't supposed to stand a chance against Justin Verlander last night either, and we know how that turned out. Guys, thanks. We'll see you again in just a minute. Well, Giant fans have certainly made themselves heard throughout this series so far, which is all of one game. But John Keating has found one that makes sure he makes himself seen. You'll meet him when Tigers Live continues. Up for the old English D, teach him young. And then this one from J Free 11, his newborn niece rocking the blue and orange flower headband. Very nice. If you have a picture showing your spirit or your babies, log on to Twitter and send it to hashtag FSTigers. Those Tiger fans certainly dress in their team colors, but John Keating has found a Giants fan, at least we think he's a Giants fan, who takes his game day outfit to a whole new level. John? All right, Mick. Well, it takes all kinds involving a World Series baseball game around AT&T Park, and here's one of the many statues. And if you, if you nudge him just a little bit, he might go into action. This is Chris Woodson. Would performance artist be a, an app description for you? Yes, it would. And I guess the obvious question is, why? To get reactions like those ladies just did over there. They just shrieked, didn't they? You must get that all the time. And you must scare that absolute bejesus out of people as they walk by you. Yes. Kids tend to cry, too, sometimes. <laughs> How long have you done it? Mm, close to two years. All right, and, and the, the paint job is phenomenal. I mean, this is well beyond Earl Scheib. Not many people remember Earl Scheib, but how much is involved in starting your day to get ready for your shift? It takes about an hour to prepare fully. Depends on the day. All right, of all the things we have seen here in San Francisco, Mickey, especially in light of what happened in game one, Chris Woodson is the absolute best. Thanks, carry on standing. Mick? <laughs> John Keating grabbing all the player interviews, painted or otherwise, after the game on, on Tigers Live. We've reached, we've reached, we've set the bar high here on Tigers Live. All right, guys, uh, this Tigers team uh, has had its back against the wall several times this season. It's always found a way to respond. Do you expect the same tonight? No, I absolutely do, Mick. Obviously, you've seen exactly what they had to go through to chase down the White Sox, and then they got themselves in the playoffs, and they've been outstanding. So I can see this team cooling and calm and collected coming out tonight and playing really good baseball. Yeah, Seymour is absolutely right. They were counted out when they lost that makeup game to the Chicago White Sox. They were counted out when they lost that doubleheader to the Minnesota Twins late in the season. Bottom line is, when they had to win, they won ball games late. And as, Mick, as uh, Craig said, they caught the White Sox. They will catch the Giants tonight here in Game 2. Somehow, some way, they're going to have to slow the game down. It's going to be very hostile. 
uh, in the ballpark again as it was in last night's game. They have to concentrate on winning the very first inning. If they do that, they take the crowd out of the game. And we don't know what the Giants' capability is as far as coming back in game. So Tigers need to get a lead early in this game tonight. Yeah, it would be nice to put a couple runs on the board in the first couple of innings, guys. Game two, not a miss win per se, but it would be nice. The Tigers, by the way, have won six straight game twos when trailing 1-0 in a series. But win or lose, we'll be back here in the call. Same skews immediately following the game with all of the highlights, reaction, analysis on Tigers. Enthusiastic than they were a night ago. We welcome you to the ballpark. The Giants and the Tigers. Game two of the World Series on Fox. Welcome to our humble abode in left field. No less enthusiastic out here than any place in the ballpark with A.J. Pierzynski, Eric Carroll, Harold Reynolds, Matt Vaskersian. All right, let's get to the numbers because baseball fans love their history. 16 of the last 17 times, A.J., the home team won game one. They went on to win a World Series. Does any of that matter moving forward this year? Absolutely it matters because Detroit is a worse road team. They have to try to sneak one out. There's more pressure. And it's not only that they lost game one, it's how they lost game one. Their ace went out and got pounded. The guy they were counting on to win probably two games in this series. All the pressure is on them. And they know if they split here one and one, they're okay. If they go down 2-0, even though they're better at home, they don't want to have to win all three games at home. Right, and I agree with AJ. Detroit, they have to win tonight. And the reason, they could be down 2-0 and not have faced Vogelsong or Kane, two of San Francisco's best pitchers. Guys, I have to disagree. I, I think the pressure's on the Giants. Yes, they're up 1-0, but the Tigers knew we go to San Francisco and we win one game, we're in good position. They feel great about Doug Fister. I know Verlander got beat up, but they're feeling pretty good. They win it tonight, they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish when they left home. How do the Tigers themselves feel about the pressure and other elements regarding game two? Let's find out. Ken Rosenthal is with Tiger skipper Jim Leland. Thanks, Matt. Jim, Verlander was on seven days rest, said he was out of sync. Fister tonight on 11 days rest. How concerned are you by his layoff? Well, I'm concerned, but he did pitch two innings in our inner squad games the other day against our instruction league team. He's just been on the Hopefully that'll help. Sandoval, three home runs last night. How do you approach him tonight? Carefully. Uh, you know, it, we'll, we'll just have to see how it plays out, but, it, you know, it's not real comfortable walking him to get to the MVP of the league probably, so it, it's a touchy one. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you exactly what our plan is because it, they might be watching this, but, you know, we'll have to be real careful, obviously, and we'll just have to make a decision whether we want to pitch to him and Posey in the situation, maybe expand the strike zone or whatever. Jim, thanks a lot. Sure. Matt, back to you. Again, thanks to the Giants side now. San Francisco takes the opener behind their veteran left-hander, a young left-hander on the mound in game two who has had his share of struggles in the postseason thus far. For more on Madison Bumgarner's night, we say hello to Aaron Andrews. Hi, Matt. Bruce Bochy told us today that he joked with Madison Bumgarner a couple days ago and said, I'm going to give you the start here in game two if you're not scared. And Bumgarner joked back and yelled, I'm not scared. This is a lot different tone than we heard from Madison after his disastrous start in the NLCS. In fact, after that game, many reporters went to him and said, is your arm fatigued? Why aren't you throwing well anymore? He went to the bullpen. He said he worked on a few mechanical flaws, and he did admit he doesn't know how his velocity is going to be tonight until he gets up on the mound but he is confident and so with many of his teammates I spoke with Ryan Terrio who admitted this guy was our ace during the regular season and we know he's going to feed off that momentum that we got back in game five of the NLCS with Barry Zito on the mound. Aaron if the postseason's been tough on Madison Bumgarner so far you can say just the opposite for yeah. Pablo Sandoval who's enjoyed himself thoroughly and I know that after the three home run game yesterday he's been rather busy since. Absolutely his phone absolutely blew up he received three hundred text messages he said he said his favorite one was from his mom who's watching the game with 30 other people at a barbecue after the first home run she said she was happy after his second home run she said she was crying and after the third she said don't want to wake up want to keep dreaming like that Aaron Andrews thanks very much and guys let's talk a little bit more about Pablo Sandoval start of the year with a 20 game hit far this year meanwhile Pablo Sandoval and Marco Scudero they've combined to hit 368 and drive in 20 the Giants Venezuelan connection is having a lot of fun.
Mark was cool. about out of business, so I'm going to the Giants because I've been on the Tiger side. Didn't work. Giants stay hot. They're 2-0 and heading back to t Detroit. The first time you picked the Giants, I think. You picked the Cardinals all the way all through. All the way through. I'm picking it off. Welcome time. to the bandwagon. It's time. amazing that those <laughs> getting booed enough here. I got Those papers game. seem to be selling here because you guys hear about your predictions every afternoon oh, when we set up. It's amazing. Well, wait, what's well, even it's interesting is rem we're reminded from the higher-ups here. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> time for us to take a quick timeout there. A stirring tribute to San Francisco and its veterans. We step aside. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, and Game Two of the World Series are coming up next. This is Game Two of the 2012 World Series. Last night, the Giants beat the Tigers behind a gritty performance from Barry Zito. Good relief work by Tim Lincecum, and then an offensive showing from Pablo Sandoval. Now, when Tim slides in here, we're going to talk about a lot of the breaks that the Giants have been getting, and there's no doubt. But make no mistake, they've made the most of those breaks, and they've outscored their opposition over the last four games, 28 to 4. But, Tim, you start looking at some of the ways the ball has bounced for the Giants. It is impressive, and it is a reason why it certainly helped them win game one. And no question about it. Rarely does the momentum from the LCS carry over to the World Series, but it did for the Giants last night. It seems like they are willing the hops to go their way. Two out, nobody on in the third inning. Angel Pagan, ball hits the bag, goes into left field instead of a single. He has a double. They are getting the breaks, but they're making those breaks. Yeah, that was the start of three more runs. That led to a hit by Scudero and a two-run shot by Sandoval. Meanwhile, the pitching matchup tonight's interesting. Madison Bumgarner gets the start. He's 0-2 this postseason. And for Detroit, a guy named Doug Fister. His name may not be Verlander, but this guy can pitch. Yeah, don't let that 10 and 10 record fool you. I mean, this guy can get you out. He's got great stuff. He has two no decisions this postseason. He's trying to even this series before we go to Detroit. The Giants have been lighting up a scoreboard. They can also light up a pinball machine. Here's the who. Don't forget, this World Series, if a player steals a base, Taco Bell is giving everyone in America one free Doritos Locos Taco. Go to hashtag steal a taco. So here we go. Sometimes you got to live Moss, and it's the same look as last night. Austin Jackson leads off in center. Omar Infante bats second at second. Miguel Cabrera hits third. Prince Fielder cleans up Delman Young and left. Johnny Peralta, the shortstop, he homered last night. Abasail Garcia is the rookie right fielder. Jared Laird is the catcher. And Doug Fister pitches and bats ninth against a left-hander who hopes he has found the flaw that has led to those numbers, an 0-2 record this postseason. Madison Bumgarner has not started a game since game one against the Cardinals in the league championship series. Stay on top. That's the most frequent phrase a starting pitcher hears. And he's been great at home, 10 and 3. No other National League pitcher has won that many games from his home mound. Here is Jackson, and pitch one is up and away, ball one. Austin last night had two hits. And overall is hitting 317 this postseason. What a difference a year makes. Under 200 last year. They talked about the changes that he's made with his approach in the batter's box at the plate. The work he's done with Lloyd McClendon has really paid off here in 2012. Hit 300 during the regular season and has a 2 1 count.
Infante next, and then Miguel Cabrera. A high strike, and it's two and two. up and out of the strike zone a full count. Austin Jackson struck out 47 fewer times this year than he did last year. Last year he had swung at that pitch not this year. A 3 2 chop foul. This opening inning is always brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Glad you're with us tonight and throughout this World Series on Fox. Jackson waits for another 3 2 and strikes out. All played umpire Dan Ayasonia early gives Bumgarner the high strike. Four seam fastball. He was on top of that one. There's Dan Ayasonia to show you the rest of the umpires in this top of the first as Omar Infante stands in. One for four last night. Strike one. Field and Culbreth is at first. Brian Onora at second. Joe West is down the left field line. Jerry Davis in right. Brian Gorman over at third. And that foul tip got the mask of Buster Posey. It's 0-2. First changeup of the night by Bumgarner, whose nickname is Mad Bum. M A D B U M. The O2. Two out. Back to back strikeouts to start the night. As Dan Iasonia had to wait to make sure Posey hung on to that foul tip. And here is the defense brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Blanco in left, Pagan in center, Hunter Pence in right with Sandoval, Crawford, Scudero, Belt on the infield, Buster Posey the catcher, Bumgarner in the middle. Every season starts at Dick's. Here is Cabrera. Miguel won for three last night with an RBI. Triple crown winner takes a pitch down and away ball one. Joe, we talked about it last night. This is what the Giants want to do with Cabrera. They'd love to split Cabrera and Fielder, have Cabrera make the last out of an inning, and Fielder lead off another inning. Here is a 1-0 pitch from Bumgarner. Strike one. Manager Jim Leland of the Tigers does not like to make excuses and goes out of his way to say I want to credit the Giants for the job they did on the mound the job they did at the plate last night but he does believe that layoff the five day layoff after the ALCS contributed to a sluggish start in game one and now they've gone in order in game two as Cabrera grounds out to short after a half. A scoreless frame put up by Bumgarner, no score. We're at Walmart with Gina, who checks all the stores' weekly ads to get the best sell prices in town. We're going to show her how to get the same great lineup for the San Francisco Giants. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Angel Pagan leads off in center. Scudero bats second at second. Pablo Sandoval hits third. Buster Posey cleans up. Hunter Pence, Brandon Belt, Gregor Blanco in left. Brandon Crawford is the shortstop pitching and batting ninth. Madison Bumgarner, and there's the right-hander, Doug Fister. And you look at the numbers this postseason. He does not have a win, but he's pitched well enough to deserve two, and here's his scouting report. The reason that Doug has been on the disabled list twice this year, that violent delivery, a rare combination of a guy who throws sinkers to contact 
and as a strikeout pitcher, he does that a lot with that curveball. And the home plate umpire is very important. And from an umpiring standpoint, you really have to wait for the fastballs to develop because of his late movement. Excellent late movement on the fastball. Angel Pagan is first up for the Giants. Shows Bunt takes a ball outside. We saw the high strike in the top of the first inning from Dan Iasonia, the home plate umpire. And believe me, these teams have scouting reports on umpires that they go over prior to every game. Right. Tendencies as that one comes back over the plate. You can see that good late movement. Pagan let it go by strike one. That's an example of what Doug Fister will try to do to left handed hitters all night long. Now a breaking ball. The curve drops in strike two. He is 6'8. 200 pounds and a great athlete says Jim Leland. Pagan trying to slow him down. Good strategy. The count one and two and that misses inside two and two. It was an absolute steal for Dave Dombrowski to get Fister from Seattle. July 30th last year. A front of the rotation guy and he starts his night with a strikeout. Tigers defensive lineup is brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. Delman Young in left. Austin Jackson is in center. Abasail Garcia is in right with Cabrera, Peralta, Infante, and fielder Gerald Laird. Gets the start behind the plate. Avila last night. Fister in the middle of it every season. Starts at Dix, and here's a guy who in five days will turn 37. Marco Scudero, who has seven multi hit games this postseason and has hit in 11 straight. That's after going 0 for 8 in the first two. It's 2 and 0. And it's that 2 3 combination that. Did it to the Cardinals in the NLCS and did it last night to that man, Justin Verlander. Two and one. In fact, it was the top of the order that did in Verlander. First four hitters were a combined 10 for 16. Everybody had multi hits. Amazing. That's a chopper tough play, Peralta. Good play, Peralta, two out. And now tonight's four keys to the game. From Fister's standpoint, the Tigers are saying, Doug, get us by Cohn, one and one. And from the Giants, keep trusting your instincts. And over the last four games, they have been remarkable. Great reaction for Pablo Sandoval, who's hitting 370. And last night had a four for four night with three home runs in his first three at bats. Fifth time it's happened, fourth guy to do it. In a World Series game. And he pops it in the air to left. Delman Young, a long run. He's there. And it's a one, two, three first for Doug Fister. Let's go to the second. Game two in San Francisco, no score. Got Covey Cove out beyond the right field wall as Prince Fielder steps in. That's what he's hitting this postseason and his career during the postseason, just 202. Five homers, 11 RBIs, and trying to get something started for the Tigers in the second. And a strike from Bumgarner. Madison is only 23 years old. And as Bruce Bochy, his manager, told us, it's easy to forget sometimes that he's only 23. Struggling with his mechanics and his delivery earlier this postseason. Let's up on that pitch down and away a ball and a strike. Tenth overall pick back in 07. It was a World Series game winner at 21 years old when he won game four. Two years ago over Texas for nothing. That hits fielder. And down to first. Is Prince the first base runner of the night ball getting away from Bumgarner and he dropped down a little bit the ball tailing inside. What do we mean when we say stay on top. 
every pitcher hears that all the time and when you're on top of the ball it goes down when you're under the ball it stays up it's that simple that pitch was up because he was under the pitch here's Delman Young one on nobody out Delman last night two out of four and he was the MVP of the last round the ALCS He'll DH when this series goes to Detroit on Saturday. Strike one. And a lot of first pitch strikes. Jackson struck out. Infante struck out. Cabrera grounded out in the first. It batsman to start the second. Now the 0-1. Hard hit and fair. Pass third and down the left field line. It's Fielder digging around second. Going to third. They're going to bring it. The relay to the plate is... In time, they got it. And Jim Leland's going to come out and argue on that double by Delman Young. Yeah, that can't happen, Joe. You can't make the first out at home plate. When it's close like that, even though Fielder may have been in there, he was out. He was. That tag was made on the back before the left foot got to home plate. I think if Gene Lamont had that to do over again, he would have held him with Peralta coming up. Great call by Dan Iasonia, the home plate umpire. It's out 7-4-2. As the left fielder Blanco missed the initial cutoff man. And it was Scudero backing up that threw to the plate to get the out. Now Peralta pops it on the infield for Belt. Two out. Well, that's why you have a double cutoff man. If the first one is missed, the second one backs up to make the play. So the shortstop was out. There's a throw by Blanco. Misses the first one. Scudero to back up. Nails Fielder at home plate. Cannot make the first out at home plate. So the double in the middle of a hit batsman and a pop up and Abaseo Garcia swings and misses a little better jump on the fastball tonight from Bumgarner than we saw in game one of the NLCS. Now, I think he's fine that uh, staying on top of the fastball. I think he's doing that thus far. You see the frustration for Prince Fielder. Sent all the way from first base on that double down the left field line. Count on one on Garcia with two out in the inning. One ball, one strike. Seems like Scudero's everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, I was just going to say, Scudero's right in the middle of it again. And his throw was good enough and a real good athletic tag by Buster Posey. To get the tag on Fielder before he touched home plate. And now a 1-1 count to Garcia. 2-1. and one. That throw had to be made inside the line, particularly with a guy like Fielder running. Prince weighs 300 pounds, and he's wide. And that made the throw that much tougher. The inside so Posey could handle it with the slap tag. Two balls and a strike. Runner at second, two out. And Bumgarner brings it. Garcia fouls it straight back. Here's Gene Lamont sending him as that ball took a funny bounce down the line. But then Blanco to Scudero to Posey. That good throw inside the line and Fielder's out. Now a 2-2 count on Garcia with a runner at second. Bumgarner's defense helps him as the defense helped out Zito last night. With Blanco making two good catches out and left. It's been a real plus for the Giants this postseason and Garcia. The 21 year old steps out. Added to the roster on August 31st. Started the season at single A. 
was in Lakeland and double A Erie got to the big leagues and here he is starting the first two games of the World Series two and two the count. Inning over strikeout number three. And a good defensive play to cut down fielder at the plate keeps game two scoreless a seven that's the number that's you're scoring given to the left fielder four is the number given to the second baseman who is in the middle of it two is the catcher and that's the first one in the history of World Series play unbelievable credit Scudero how many second basemen would be over there here is a 1 1 to Posey good breaking ball for strike two that curve just dropped in to Buster who is Hitting 204 this postseason, two out of four last night in game one. Hunter Pence on deck. Base hit. Right field, and Buster Posey is on to start the second. And let's go back to that play at the plate. A.J. Pierzynski, a current catcher in the big leagues, is joining us from out in left field. What do you see out there? Well, first of all, when the ball goes in the left field corner, it's hard on a third base coach to decide what to do. You see him overrun it right there in Lamont. Sometimes you wonder why did he send him right here second and third no outs with Johnny Peralta coming up and then Buster Posey who everyone knows was told not to block the plate. If you watch the slide right here Prince Fielder's knee is bent instead of straight and he kind of is up in the air and also then you the guy on deck has to tell him to slide to the outside because of the fact that Buster Posey's not going to try and block the plate especially with Prince coming down the line. First pitch is a ball to Hunter Pence plus AJ when you receive a ball from the left side of the field. Scudero and Scudero in that particular instance you're going to stay inside the line. There's no way to block the plate with Fielder because if you block the plate then that's going to obscure the throw from Scudero. No but the throw I thought Tim was inside enough where he could have held his ground if you watch Buster takes a step to the inside and frees up a whole lane for Prince to slide to the outside and do the swipe tag. You, you've got it. You've got to throw it inside the line. Fielders running inside the line. I mean, if you throw it to where Buster is blocking the plate, it hits Fielder and goes awry. That's the way I saw it. Okay. I just think that you have the ability as a catcher to kind of keep your leg in there and not take that slight step to the inside and clear up the whole plate and kind of make force him to the area of the plate you want him to be, which would be to the outside. I know Buster. Had, Buster had the horrible injury uh, last season but that's just as a catcher and you know Tim is catching sometimes that's part of the course and you got to take it as part of the game two balls two strikes on Pence and a breaking ball is fouled and the other point that AJ brought up was there wasn't a ton of help from the on deck hitter that was Peralta who came out of the on deck circle a little later and wasn't giving any direction really definitively to fielder who was coming down the line to go to the outside part of the plate. Here's a 2 2 fly ball into center and that's Jackson one out. Well when you see the catcher inside the line you should go to the outside part of the plate but it's got to be a straight in slide because the straight in slide is much quicker in getting there than hooking and you never hook into a catcher anyway. Brandon Belt with one on one out will dig in hitless last night. And as A.J. mentioned, and this will be one more look, but that's Prince who gets tagged by Buster Posey, and A.J. talked about it. You can assume everybody knows that Buster was injured in a terrible collision at the plate last May. On the 25th of May, Here's a 0 1 pitch down and in one ball one strike. Blanco who made those two catches last night in game one. Corralled that ball after it took a funny hop. And got it to Scudero who got it to the plate. Now the count one and two on belt. What shouldn't be lost in this inning Tim is what you said about Posey last night. He was pulling off pitches last night. He got a couple of hits. One of them went to right. His base hit here was shot through the right side to start this inning. 
Yeah, with a guy like Buster, when you're pulling off the ball, you, you ought to try to treat a lot of strikes like there are two strikes on you. Buster is very adept at going the other way with two strikes on him, as he did to get to first base. Now there are two strikes on Belt. With Blanco on deck. A strikeout gets Brandon Belt. Second strikeout for Fister. And the inning will get to Blanco with a run at first two out now. Boy, that's a good changeup. I'll make that a split from Fister. Ball going down and away. And Brandon Belt out in front. Blanco has been struggling. His overall average this postseason, 200. Since game three of the NLCS, he's just two out of his last 19. Strike one. Lead off hit by Posey. Pence, little pop up. Belt struck out. Strike one on Blanco. He tried to hold up, could not. Strike two. AJ talking uh, before the game about how Fister jumps at you when he's from the stretch. Very quick feet. And he makes hitters do this a lot. Check their swing. When he jumps, you commit sometimes too early. That's a ball high, one and two. Posey at first, two out. Fister. Watch Blanco just get a piece. While the top of the order was so good last night for the Giants in game one, the five through nine spots had just one RBI. And that belonged to the pitcher. Barry Zito. Yeah, the Giants were top heavy last night in their lineup. Now Blanco steps out before a 1 2 pitch. Just one for 19, hitters five through nine. One on, two out. And hit Fister is in the air and goes to center field for a base hit. And hopefully Fister's okay. I think it hit his glove. He got that glove up. We're talking about Jim Leland talking about his athleticism. You better be a good athlete in this situation. Watch the glove. No, he didn't get it. It did not get it up. Hit him on the side of the head. My gosh. Oh, oh boy. Mm. Oh, man. I think of Brandon McCarthy with the Oakland Athletics who had a similar pop about a month and a half ago. And we are hopeful that Brandon's all right. And obviously, Doug Fister. Man. Oh. He's still out there. He's going to throw a couple of pitches. You know, Joe, I, I think. And I never thought this before this year, but I think baseball is going to have to resort to helmets for pitchers like catchers wear. First base coach, third base coach wear them. I think uh, something should be done next year because when a pitcher finishes his wind up or his stretch and he tells the trainer he's okay, right on the side, right side of the head. But I think ultimately that's what baseball will come to and I think properly Brandon Crawford now with two on two out and somehow Fister's still on the mound good curveball misses low ball one Brandon Crawford whose parents have been longtime San Francisco Giants season ticket holders 
trying to excite them as he fouls it out of play left side strike one. Blanco the runner at first. Posey led off the inning with a base hit into right. And a 1-1 count on the number eight hitter, Brandon Crawford. Pretty good pitch called inside, ball two. Two and one the count, two on, two out. That curveball is outside, three and one. On deck is the pitcher, Bumgarner, who can handle the bat. Runners at first and second, two out, and a good breaking ball on three and one. Three straight breaking balls and a breaking ball and a fastball count. Once you get that over, it's always good policy to come back with a fastball. Runners will go. And a foul out of play left side. Back to second, Posey. Back to first, Blanco. go and the breaking ball is high for ball four first walk by Fister and the bases are loaded with Bumgarner coming up remember the pitchers for the Giants have been driving in runs and it has happened in the last four straight games starting with Zito in St. Louis in game five with a bunt base hit for an RBI. And Vogel song, then Kane. That's low ball one. Gerald Laird, the catcher, is corralling that low fastball, and here it is. Four RBIs in four straight games. Vogel song a part of it. Kane in game seven. Last night, Zito in game one of this World Series. So Zito's got a bunt base hit for an RBI and a clean one, and a clean one through the left side. Now Bumgarner pops it into shallow left, and out goes Peralta to end the inning. That gave this crowd a rise. Two hits, a walk in the inning, three left after two. In game two, no score. Bunt takes a ball. Gerald hit 282. Last year won it all with the Cardinals. He's one for 13 so far this postseason. There's a strike from Bumgarner. Home plate umpire Dan Iasonia is wearing a microphone tonight and will let you in on the audio that occurred on that ball hit by Blanco. Off the head of Doug Fister last half inning. After Laird does something to start the frame, it's a 2 1 count. That last pitch, Madison Bumgarner, that ball flattened out on him. That's what uh, Dave Bergetti's looking for. Not too many pitches that flatten out on Bumgarner. Here is a 2 1. Popped up into left. Blanco is there. One out, and here's the audio. And that ball was hit back up the middle by Blanco. Whoa! Doug, you okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Where'd you go? Right the head. I got him right in the back of the head. Back of the head is the one down. Okay. Yeah. It's on the side. Man. No, I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. San Francisco, yeah. game two. Yeah. All that shit. What do you mean? Second. Yeah. Anything else? You want to throw one or are you okay? So then he got to throw a warm-up pitch, said he was fine, and got out of the inning after issuing a walk to Crawford. 
He got Bumgarner, and now he's up there to bat. And fouls it back. Saying San Francisco, game two. No way to get him out of there. Courageous. We have a chance to meet these guys in the postseason, and we haven't met anybody any better than Doug Fister. Classy guy. We had on last night in the fourth inning from the dugout. I said he's a steal, and he was for the Tigers. Tigers got him from Seattle. He was 3 and 12 with the Mariners. Picked him up on July 30th. Dave Dombrowski did it, one of the best front office men in the game, and he ended up finishing the season 8 and 1 with an ERA of 1.79. Then went 2 and 1 in the postseason when the Tigers lost in the ALCS to Texas. Three of the four starting pitchers in this World Series for Dave Dombrowski and the Tigers were acquired via trade. Max Scherzer two years ago, Fister last year, and then Annabelle Sanchez this year. We'll get the ball in game three against Ryan Vogelsong. Scherzer, who will work game four against Matt Cain. Two and two the count on Fister. That's out number two. And strikeout number four for Bumgarner. Everything appearing to be in sync for Madison Bumgarner here in the third inning. Four strikeouts. He's allowed the one hit that led to the play at the plate. The fielder was thrown out. By a combination of Blanco and left and Scudero at second. Good tag by Posey. Ball one outside. Austin Jackson part of that big deal. Scherzer was a part of that. Three way trade. Yankees. Another guy the Tigers got in that deal, Phil Coke, who is now the closer for Detroit. Shears are coming from Arizona. It's Coke. Here is a 2 0. Foul back 2 and 1. Last year, Austin Jackson had a high leg kick. This year, he doesn't. There's the high leg kick from 2011. He and, he and Lloyd McClendon worked on it so hard this year. And you could see he just gets up on the toes. And strides forward near 300 as a result. Good pitch by Bumgarner, and that breaking ball finds the strike zone two and two. With two out, another strikeout, number five. And another one, two, three inning for Bumgarner. Bottom of the third inning in San Francisco. Giants bat, no score. Struck out his first time up. Fister is struck out two and pitched around two hits and a walk last inning. Here is his 0 1. Good tailing pitch. Which he showed Pagan back in the first. That's strike two. That's vintage Fister right there. Inside corner, left handers give up on it. Arms up, strike two. Marco Scudero will follow, and then Pablo Sandoval. Here's an 0 2. Down and in. Giants have outscored their opponent, the Cardinals and the Tigers, last night over the last four games, 28 to 4. And they've hit 15 home runs here in their last 15 games. Pagan grounds to Fielder. And this team, the Giants, they have been loose since the postseason began. They have fun. Brian Wilson usually is a part of it. So is 
closer Sergio Romo, who Romo bombs <laughs> last night's hero, Pablo Sandoval. Take it down to Aaron Andrews after the next pitch. She is on the Giants side. Kenny on the Detroit side. Great place from which to watch a World Series down in a World Series dugout. Strike one. The Scudero who grounded out his first time. Breaking ball stays up. One and one. Two for five in this World Series is Scudero after hitting 500 in the NLCS. Curveball is fouled and let's go down to Aaron. They've been having fun since you joined us here at MLB on Fox. They certainly have Sergio Romo right over my shoulder. I'm afraid he's uh -oh. going to Romo bomb me. But I want to tell you during batting practice, it's really the first time since I've been around the Giants that they were talking about they want to get out of San Francisco up two games to none. And, and I said to some of the players, you guys haven't really sounded like this even when you were playing the Cardinals. And they said, look, we really need to take advantage of this momentum that we have right there. Two out in the inning as Peralta takes care of Scudero. Dave? And Joe, just to mention, you're going to be joined by Sergio Romo, so you can ask him about that party-like atmosphere. He's on his best behavior right now. Boy, that was close. That's a dangerous play by a guy who is locked in, and the Giants holding their breath with that left hand. He's out. What an excellent call by first base umpire Fielder Culbert. He is two for two on two tough ones. Man. And then a good call at the plate by Iasonia. Here's Sandoval with two out, and that misses the outside corner ball one. Pablo flied to left his first time up and now grounds to the second baseman Infante. And a 1 2 3 inning for Doug Fister. Both pitchers are on tonight in game two. No score after three. One for five in this World Series, 11 of 40 this postseason. There's a strike and it's one and one. Leading it off, Infante. Lines one now, one hop. Crawford can't make a play. And that'll be a base hit for Omar Infante. That'll bring in Miguel Cabrera. A triple crown winner and a guy who came up when he was 20, hit a walk-off home run on June 20th. His major league debut won the World Series in 2003 with the Marlins traded to Detroit in December of 07. And now this season ridiculous numbers back to back batting titles going back to 2011 and the first triple crown winner since 1967. It was in that 2003 World Series when Roger Clemens knocked him down and then he homered to right field a pitch later and everybody thought well this guy has arrived and did he ever in a big way we talked to him prior to last night's game and you were talking about that at bat he remembered the pitch sequence and when you talk to guys around Cabrera they say his memory for specific at bats is unbelievable for detail I thought it was three and one he said uh uh it was two and two Here's a 1 0. That's down and in, 2 0. Great Hank Greenberg leading the way for career postseason RBIs with Detroit. Prince Fielder on deck as the Tigers down one game to nothing, trying to strike first here in game number two. Check on Infante. Cabrera with amazing ability to always stay balanced at home plate. Never gets off balance, can hit the ball out of the park in any direction. 
You said last night there just aren't any holes in that swing. No. He's looking for an inside fastball right here to crank. And he cranks it caught. Sandoval over at third. One out, and it was loud. It was loud. Can't hit it any harder. Pablo Sandoval knows that that was a La Lina. I mean, that was a line drive. <laughs> Ooh. And Cabrera is now 0 for 2. One on, one out. For Cabrera, his good buddy, Pablo Sandoval over at third. Grabbed it. Those two are good friends, right, Ken Rosenthal? They are. They actually met as teenagers. Miguel Cabrera was Winter League teammates with Sandoval's older brother, Michael, and they became buddies in one of Sandoval's prouder moments, 2008 Venezuelan Winter League. He beat Miguel Cabrera in a home run hitting contest. Here's a pitch outside to Prince Fielder. One fifth of the Giants' roster is from Venezuela. Fielder steps out. Prince hit by a pitch and then was thrown out at the plate in the second. In the air to left, back is Blanco on the track. Two out. And Infante back to first. And Blanco is covering a ton of ground out in left. Yeah, that was more routine than the two plays he made. The other against Cabrera. Gives you an idea of the tremendous strength of Prince Fielder and Mad Bum happy about that one. Bumgarner making his fifth career postseason start two and two. He had two wins in 2010. He's 0 and 2 this season, but much better here tonight. A check on Infante with Delman Young at the plate. And Ken Rosenthal asked manager Bruce Bochy of the Giants how he handled Bumgarner, who was upset with his stuff. After that loss in game one of the NLCS coming into this World Series and giving him the start. Great jump, throw over, and out to win the inning. He left a bit too soon, and Bumgarner cuts him down with a throw from Brandon Belt. He was out. Another good call by this umpire and crew, no score after three and a half. Then Pence, then Belt against Pfister. Breaking ball drops low. We're pleased to be joined by Sergio Romo, who is the closer now for the San Francisco Giants. And it has been so fun getting to know you during this postseason and keeping cameras on you because you have a blast down there, don't you? Oh, uh, definitely, definitely having a blast. I mean, as you can see, I got some teammates already throwing stuff at me. Uh, very blessed to be in this position uh, to be able to experience uh, everything's going on in my life. I mean, what a ride so far, right? <laughs> yeah, and when we had a chance to meet with you, as Posey has the count now two and one, you talked about how your confidence grew during the course of the season, and you now know you're good enough to be a big league closer. Yes, sir. Uh, I tell you what, this year has been a very humbling experience for me. Uh, good and bad, uh, the ups and downs, uh, what I've been through alongside my teammates, it, you know, as a group, that, yeah, it's been a lot. It's very humbling for me. But then personally, uh, you know, losing Wilson, uh, wow, right my way. Oh, almost got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> need a glove, fellas. Yeah. Need a glove. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but losing Wilson, I mean, it hurt us a lot. You know, it, the thing is, it's, it, it was just, another way of challenging myself you know it was, it was another uh, task at hand another uh, I mean just challenge for me you know and 
my teammates, they never backed, you know, they never backed away from me. They never shined away from uh, having confidence and showing me that every day, every time I got the ball. So very proud to, to be that man so far. Yeah, that we're replaying that uh, play near the dugout without your glove. But I mean, I tried. You know, Ser Sergio, the one thing that stands out about you is I don't know of another major leaguer who appreciates the game of baseball at the big league level any more than you do. Uh, I credit that with my dad. Uh, he's still a big fan of the game. He still plays himself down in Mexico uh, at 55 years old. So, uh, I mean, I credit my dad to <laughs> all of that stuff. I mean, the love of the game, uh, this baseball has been the most uh, consistent thing in my life outside of baseball. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's what a blessing this game has, uh, has been to me and my life and my family. And, I mean, I tell you what, my family, my, from my dad, my grandparents, both grand, uh, both granddads, uh, my brother, my sister, I mean, we've all found a way to play baseball or softball or something, so it's definitely in the family. Yeah, and you, uh, as Posey flies out to left, got under that ball jammed a little bit, you told us that your grandfather, you've had to convert from a Dodger fan. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was quite a <laughs> the, uh, story there. It's kind of ironic how I grew up, uh, you know, following my dad and, and my and my and my grandfather, and then everything that they did, I wanted to do exactly just like them. Uh, so they were Dodgers fans, and I kind of was grown up that way and uh, brought up that way, and it just, I mean. <laughs> And then you're picked by the Giants. <laughs> That's what's funny about it. I got drafted by the Giants, and uh, I mean, my dad was so excited. He he understood just an opportunity was what uh, all that mattered to me most. But I called my grandpa and I was like, "Hey, grandpa, I got drafted." And, uh, his exact words were, well, "I'm so proud of you, Mio. On uh, what team?" Uh, my answer was exactly, well, that's the, that's the thing. And he goes, he knew right away, no, anybody but them, anybody but the Giants. And I was like, yeah, well, Grandpa, it is what it is, right? And uh, sure enough, as the time's gone by, uh, let's just say I've seen him wearing a Giants shirt or two or a Giants hat or <laughs> orange sure. black here and there. <laughs> two balls and a strike on Hunter Pence, who fly to center his first time up. One out, nobody on. And Fister, breaking ball is nasty. A swing and a miss. Did you see that? Were you in the dugout when that ball went off the head of Doug Fister? Yes. Oh, what a scary moment. You don't ever want to see that, that's for sure. But uh, very glad he's fine. I mean, especially for him and his health, you know. Uh, but I mean, like in baseball, you, you never really know what's going to happen next. And that's definitely an example of that. Two balls, two strikes. With one out, nobody on. You, you guys. Uh, First of all, I saw you walking around in the clubhouse with like a wrestling mask on <laughs> earlier today. You guys have more fun in your clubhouse. Wilson's bouncing around and uh, I mean that look on your face. That's you guys. I don't see any or feel any stress from you all, even though these games are in the World Series. Is that accurate? Oh, definitely. Uh, we're just having fun. Uh, model of our team is uh, play for the guy next to you. The smile on my teammates' face matters more than the smile on my face. And uh, any way to contribute, any way to put that smile on their faces, it really matters to us. And uh, I mean, what a fun ride it really has been. Oh! That's oh, foul. See, he got excited. Sorry, guys. No, that's um, all right. But you see the excitement here. They, it, we all believe that we, you know, we're, we're just a, a legitimate team. We may not be the most talented or have the biggest names or whatnot, but we're a solid group of guys. We care about each other, and it, there's no personal, like, time to shine, you know? I mean, there, there's not, that's not what we're seeking. Uh, we, we all just want to be as good as we can be, and we understand that as a group, all success has come, really, you know? They, that's what comes first, you know? And, 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 and what better way to go out as world champs, right? You know, so we're we trying to be that. Hunter Pence has run the count full. Spister is trying to get him to chase. And now a 3-2 pitch from Doug Fister to Pence. Off the hands, it's a foul ball, and what an effort, but out of the reach of Prince Fielder. Yeah, that ball did not have enough hang time. Prince appears to be all right. But once again, he is a big, big man. And he took a hard tumble with that slide. What an athletic man, that's for sure. Yeah, Sergio, he's a big guy, but he, he's an unbelievable athlete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I definitely Quick. give him credit for everything that he's done, that's for sure. Prince couldn't get to it, so the at-bat continues. The count's still full. And uh, Fister gives Prince a moment to get 
collected over at first base with one out in the inning. Nobody on, no score fourth. Frame of game number two. Here's a 3-2. And a fly ball into center. Back is Jackson on the run. Two out. Nice play by Austin Jackson going back to get it. Now we've kind of coined this whole thing, Sergio. Uh, Romo bombing or photo bombing. You got Pablo Sandoval earlier tonight. Uh, definitely got him earlier. I mean, I, I mean, I'm getting everybody really. Uh, it, I mean, I, starting a trend. I don't really know what the purpose is of it. It's just being silly. You know, this is just another side of the goofiness that I can bring to the table, I guess. And uh, <laughs> I mean, oh, come on. I feel like a little kid every day. Every day I'm here. What a blessing. That's it. A one, two, three inning. Sergio, thanks. We may see you later tonight. You guys already know. All right. He's a beauty. Great guy. Sergio Romo. He's been having fun. No score after four game two. Back after this from your local Fox station. Tech taking on number three, Kansas State. Of course, Eddie, Joey, and I will have the studio show for you at 3 p.m. Eastern. We have a good matchup, and obviously, big talk in college football right now is Colin Klein, the quarterback for Kansas State. They're calling him Optimus Klein, and we can see how much he can uh, get everybody putting their votes in for him for the Heisman. He did a good job against Geno Smith in West Virginia last week on our air. All right, great. Thank you, Aaron. That's on Saturday. And then good NFL matchups on Sunday. As Delman Young swings through a pitch and he's in the hole 0 and 2. Delman doubled his first time up. There's the matchup 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific. Texas Tech and K State. Here's an 0 2. Young goes after it and strikes out. That's number six on the night for Madison Bumgarner. And this start. Couldn't be going any better for number 40. A lot of people think that control is throwing strikes, but control is throwing a ball when you need to. Ahead, 0 and 2, six strikeouts now for Bumgarner. One out in the inning for Johnny Peralta, who popped up. He did so with a runner at second, one out back in the second. That was the best scoring chance tonight for the Tigers. Fielder let off was hit by a pitch then the double down the line by Young the relay got Prince Fielder at the plate. The biggest chance for the Giants against Fister was when they loaded the bases but had Bumgarner at the plate and he popped into shallow left. Strike one on Johnny Peralta. First two games eight innings combined ten earned runs he lost. Game two of the division series against Cincinnati nine to nothing and then game one of the NLCS six to four. Could not go five innings in either start. Here's a pop up into right. And Pence drifting makes the catch two out. Our video game summary is presented by Windows 8. And it's that play at the plate. And the relay from Blanco to Scudero to Posey. And you see the good tag to get it on the left leg, left hip of Prince Fielder to keep it scoreless. Here's Garcia. Two hits each side. Garcia struck out his first time. Avasail stole 23 bases, along with hitting 14 home runs, hit just under 300 in the minors. He swings right through that one, strike one. 25 years old, and he signed five years ago with the Tigers. At 16 years old, that is the age limit to sign Latin American players. 16. Up and away, one ball, one strike. Garcia trying to get something started with two out here in the fifth. Kind of an Andy Pettit look. Off the hands, good pitch. Scudero gets the out. And another one, two, three inning for Madison Bumgarner. 
in what's turned into a pitcher's duel here in game two of the World Series. Halfway through it, no score. And a comparison of the two starters. Fister back to work, bottom of the fifth, no score. Each side with two hits, that's it. Well, last night, thanks to Tim Barry Manilow, was trending on Twitter. I heard. And Kenny Rosenthal, what's going on after our little chat with Sergio Romo? Well, Mr. Romo is now trending worldwide, and there are quite a number of people out there who enjoyed his stylings during that inning. Here is Fister off the mound to get the out, and thankfully for Detroit, Fielder was able to get his arm back close to his body and out of the way of Gregor Blanco who tried to bunt his way on. That was dangerous. Watch Fielder pick it and bring his left arm back. Hit out of the way. And the bunt wasn't that good, but Doug Fister just showed us a little bit of what Jim Leland talked about. He said he is our best fielding pitcher, even though he's a big guy, 6'8". He bounces off the mound and made that play. Here's Crawford. He takes over below ball one. Brandon walked his first time. Bumgarner on deck. Good game, game two. 2-0. Two oh. Again, with different counts, you try to do different things as a hitter. With the pitcher coming up, Crawford will be trying to pull the ball, looking for something inside, like that. And it's two and one. Fister just peeking over that glove as well. Brings home a 2 1 to Brandon Crawford. Got the outside corner, 2 and 2. Well framed by Laird, the catcher. And with one out, nobody on. Crawford is jammed, and he fouls it. The direction of Jim Leland, who is working on a one year deal. General Manager Dave Dombrowski, who we showed earlier, said, I told Jim he's welcome back. There was a time during the season when this big payroll, the Tigers weren't in first place, that that wasn't a done deal. But basically, Dombrowski has said that if Jim Leland wants to come back, he'll be the Tiger manager in 2013. Here's a 2-2. Down toward where Sergio Romo was earlier, and now Guillermo Moda is over there. But he wasn't alone. Ball in that third base dugout from left handed batters, they're always aware. Right handers, no chance. But left handers, you've got to be alive, and they work. Aaron Andrews down there as well, and her shadow, Jimmy Delmonico. JD. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Just outside a full count. With one out, Crawford checks on Peralta. Has to wait on it. Low throw, but out. Two gone. Madison Bumgarner, who popped a couple of home runs this season, was 11 of 68, 0 for 3 this postseason. Walks in. Madison had a chance with the bases loaded, two out his last time. But popped out into shallow left. Peralta went out to grab it, the shortstop. Here's a 1-0 from Fister. See 
Bumgarner can swing the bat. One and one. A couple of home runs for Madison this year. He has power. Breaking ball stays inside. It's two and one. Switch hitting Pagan on deck. Fister. Right in on the fists, and it's a 2 2 count. Fister not showing any ill effects from that line drive, that hitting on the right side of the head back in the second inning. Nice to see. That foul tip got layered. And the count still 2 and 2. Thrown 54 pitches since he got hit in the head on that line drive back up the middle by Blanco. And he has brought his usual good stuff with him to the park. If you're just joining us, back in the second, Doug Fister delivered a pitch and Blanco lined one back up the middle and he tried to get his glove up. The ball glanced off the right side of his head and then into center field for a base hit. They checked on him. He said he was okay and now he has struck out three on the night. Allowed no runs on two hits and that sends us into the sixth. What a game. What a pitching matchup. No score. On each side. Nothing, nothing with Laird, Fister, and Austin Jackson coming up. Bumgarner's been great tonight. He's done a lot of that. First pitch strikes. Strikes. As he is ahead on the count to Laird. That is just down and away, a ball and a strike. Things are so difficult to adjust in the postseason. You don't have the time nor the luxury, but Dave Brigetti, the pitching coach of the Giants, has just done a very good job with his 23-year-old left-hander. That's back and out of play. And a left-hander who, since 2009, when he came up at the age of 20, has the fifth-best ERA in baseball among left-handed starters. Seven. And that's how the sixth inning begins. You can join Major League Baseball in helping those veterans who have done so much to help us. Log on to welcomebackveterans.org for more information on how you can make a difference. Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan, that's a live shot. And hopefully a taste of home and some normalcy for the women and men serving overseas. Earlier in the game, we had a shot of them and they were doing the wave. <laughs> it's great. Here is Fister, throws right, bats left, and takes low ball one. That all transpired after one of the more moving ceremonial first pitches that we've seen in a long time. That's down and away, 2-0. and Nicholas Kimmel, 22-year-old, corporal in the U.S. Marine Corps, from Washington, graduated high school in 2008. So you're reminded how young these men and women are. Here's a ground ball to Scudero. And that's out number two here in the sixth inning. Join the Marines, Nicholas did in September of 2008. Four years of service, and he is a triple amputee with the great Willie Mays, Barry Zito. Sergio Romo who caught the pitch which he does every day here in San Francisco Nicholas was injured December 1st last year while on his second tour of duty in Afghanistan lost both legs his left arm in a blast and he 
He's great friends to Barry Zito, Matt Kane, Javier Lopez, and Barry Zito does a lot. Not alone on this Giants team, but a lot for veterans coming back home. So a Purple Heart recipient. Nicholas Kimmel with a great first pitch. Three right strike. Down the middle. Yeah, yeah. Through a strike. With two out, nobody on. Here's a 2 0. Jackson, strike one. Barry Zito has a foundation strikeouts for troops. He started seven years ago. He's been providing the comforts of home and lifting the spirits and morale of wounded troops. So good for him and a nice moment for Nicholas Kimmel. Before World Series game number two. That's down the line, but that is foul. Into the corner, two and two. Austin Jackson hit 16 home runs during the regular season. He was sitting on that inside fastball then to try to give Detroit the lead. Instead. He could become the eighth strikeout victim for Bumgarner. The 2 2. Up. Oh. Then a full count. With two out. That's low. And the first walk issued by Bumgarner in this game. Keeps the top of the sixth inning alive for Infante. Coming into tonight, San Francisco Giants pitching over the last four games has gone 4 0, obviously, but an ERA of one. And an opponent's batting average against a 201. Zito's been a big part of that. Made two of the starts over those last four games. Started tonight on regular rest. That is a foul ball. And we'll see if Austin Jackson wants to do any running during this at bat with Infante at the plate. I don't think so. He has not stolen a base against a left hander this year. 12 stolen bases. He's been caught nine times. The odds are against him. Bumgarner has already picked off one runner tonight. And that was Omar Infante. Omar's at the plate with two out. He one down into the corner but foul strike two and we've seen a couple of hard hit balls the last two batters the two right handed batters pulled foul down the line yeah Joe third time through the lineup so the right handed batters for the Tigers look for them to look for that inside fastball that's been so successful for Bumgarner tonight the deeper you go the tougher it is to pitch to these guys Strikeout NZ inning. Number eight on the night, two in the frame. And we go into the bottom of the sixth inning as we thank our troops in Afghanistan and around the world. World Series, game two, scoreless after five and a half. Bottom of the sixth inning, game two. Doug Fister delivers ball one to Angel Pagan, top of the lineup for the Giants. Ryan Biederman and Victor Gonzalez night after night during October and nobody does it better than those two. One ball one strike on Angel Pagan who was struck out grounded out. Scudero next and then Sandoval. Here's a one one. It goes around the plate. Ball two. Fister can't do much better. He's allowed no runs on two hits, struck out three, walked one. 
That is just up. And it's three and one. So far, Joe, Doug Fister's done a good job of pitching downhill. When you pitch downhill, you get the ball down. And at 6 8, it's more difficult for Doug than other pitchers. Here is his 3 1 on the inside part of full count. We have seen many examples, and Pagan has specifically, of that good late movement that Fister features. His 3 2 is slash foul. It's not a sinking fastball. It's a tailing fastball. There's a big difference. Into center. Back is Jackson and to his right. Well in front of the track. He has out number one and Pagan 0 for 3 tonight. He had a real good at bat last night, which could get overlooked. Yes, the ball did hit the bag on that chopper, but it was at the end of a good at bat against Verlander. Then Scudero got a base hit to score Pagan. Sandoval hit his second of three home runs the other way to left. With two strikes, you keep fouling them off till you catch a break. Scudero, strike one. Marcos grounded out twice. That is a foul ball, strike two. Geico in-game box score for the Giants, only two hits. Posey had a leadoff base hit to right in the second. And Blanco is the one who lined the ball back off the right side of the head of Doug Fister and into center. By the way, he brought up the name of Brandon McCarthy during the replays of that, and he tweeted that he's doing fine. Oh, that's great. From our social media hawk, Ken Rosenthal. Here's the 0-2. Well, I think Fister put that right where he wanted, and Scudero didn't go after it. You could hear Don or Dan Ayasonia say that ball was outside, just barely. Still one and two. I'll tell you, Joe. You made mention of it a couple of innings ago. These umpires are on point tonight. They are honed in. Another one, two. Breaking ball in the dirt. Smothered by Laird. Two and two. Scudero is grounded a short two times. An 11 game hitting streak is on the line as we get deeper into this game. Gets under it, pops it up left side, and Cabrera's got to play. Two out. Here comes Panda. We had a great talk with Bruce Bochy before the game about Sandoval, who only had three at-bats in the World Series two Octobers ago. During that season, he got really heavy to the point where he couldn't move around very well. Then that offseason, he really went to work on his body, and last year had a great year. Bruce Bochy said, we're going to get after him again this upcoming offseason so he can shed some weight leading into 2013. But right now we're just letting them go. And whereas he'd been working out before and after games doing a lot of cardio he has not been doing that during the postseason. And he's been hot. And he gets a base hit into right with two out in the sixth. 
Coach, he said maybe not doing some of that cardio before and after games has allowed him to be a little fresher. And he is swinging like it here over the last 11 games. Yeah, Joe, with that body type, he's just got to do a lot more work than most people to stay fit and trim. Or as much as he can. Third hit of the game for the Giants. And it brings in Buster Posey. As Drew Smiley, the left-hander, gets loose, he was a big part of the game one win. In extra innings at Yankee Stadium in the ALCS. Here's Posey. Breaking ball is low. So over 100 pitches on the night. Pitch number 101 extended this frame on the base hit by Sandoval. Strike one. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal more on Pablo. Well, Joe, Pablo Sandoval received more than 300 text messages last night after his three homer game. But his favorite one came from his mom, who was watching at a family barbecue in Puerto Cabello, Venezuela. First, after his first home run, she was happy. After his second, she was crying. And after his third, she said, Don't stop dreaming like this. Don't wake up. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, that kind of goes for the Giants. Don't wake up. Rely on your instincts. Don't think too much. Two balls and a strike. And now Sergio Romo has added a glove just in case. Two foul balls have whistled down at the end of the bench. Good pitch, strike two. Two and two. Sergio's already caught a first pitch tonight. He loves to do that. You talked about it earlier. He badgers Bruce Bochy. He wants to catch the first pitch every night. Meaning the ceremonial first pitch. Yeah, right. One on, two out, two balls, two strikes. And that is just inside. And not only did Fister start to walk away, so did three of the infielders thinking this was strike three. Yeah, it was well inside. Laird is setting up outside, and the ball stayed in off the plate. Good. Strike zone discipline shown by Dan Iasonia, the plate umpire tonight. Runner will go. 3-2 pitch. We'll do it again. So Pablo getting his cardio in now. <laughs> I think the only thing that will score Sandoval is a ball in the gap. And for that reason, the Tigers defense in the outfield playing about three or four steps deeper than they normally would. Cut down on that ball in the gap. Runner at first, two out, three balls, two strikes. Jammed him. Shallow left, and in comes Delman Young to end the inning. Had to come a long way. Giants have stranded four. Still no score back after this from your local Fox station. Fielder will follow and then Delman Young, the three, four, and five hitters. Bumgarner has handled Cabrera so far. When we were talking about Bochi, when he made his decision to give Bumgarner a start in this World Series, he said, well, how did you go about that? And talk to him and gauge the confidence that the 23 year old left hander had. Here comes the first pitch to Cabrera. Outside ball one because Bumgarner after that game one start in the NLCS didn't like his stuff and did not sound confident. Didn't sound as confident as Bruce Bochy was in him and Bochy during the off day said I'm going to give you a start unless you're scared. And Bumgarner said I'm not scared. Give me the ball. Bruce knew that too. Here's a 1 0. 2 0. This is the most dangerous situation he's been in thus far. He was 2 0 to Cabrera the last time up. Cabrera lined to third. Sandoval on the line, by the way. to protect against the extra base hit. Here's a 2-0. In for strike one. No action for the Giants in their bullpen. Smiley and Dotel 
Lefty and a righty getting ready for the Tigers in their pen. Here's a 2-1. Got it by him. 90 miles per hour from Bumgarner. It's two and two. He has struck out eight. And Cabrera with that good coverage fouls it back still two and two that's why he doesn't strike out that much he struck out 98 times this year for a man with that much power 44 home runs that, that is not a lot of strikeouts and it's because he stays alive on tough pitches that was a nasty pitch on the outside corner Cabrera still there so another 2-2 two -two pitch Cabrera gets time. Miguel with 44 home runs during the regular season leans back from ball three. Still only 29 years old is Miguel Cabrera. What's it going to be on three and two? Popped up, back and out of play. Another 3-2 is fouled away by Cabrera. Next pitch will be the ninth of this at bat. outside and Posey popped up like he was going to throw it around the horn instead it's a leadoff walk nine pitches and here they are the first two miss outside 2-0 fouls it off takes a ball 3-2 fouls two off Just low. And Bruce Bochy thought that was strike three instead of ball four. Now Fielder trying to pump one out of here. Strike one. Triple Brown winners get that pitch. A 3-2 pitch just low. Big swing by Prince Fielder. Who protected last year's MVP Ryan Braun in Milwaukee and protected in the lineup potential MVP and Miguel Cabrera that's back to Bumgarner out got them both with the left-handed hitter up and chances of him pulling the ball the shortstop is covering one hopper to Bumgarner. Easy 1-6-3 double play. And Madison is now one out away from pitching seven innings here tonight. Seven shutout innings as he deals with Delman Young. Delman has doubled. He has the only extra base hit of this game. 
That was in his first at bat in the second. He struck out his next time up. Think about this World Series. Because of the rest, Detroit had their pitching lined up with Verlander for game one. They could line it up any way they wanted. The Giants went seven games with St. Louis, and they had to start with Zito, and now give another start to Bumgarner as Young fouls it away. They kept Lincecum in the bullpen. He was another option. But now the Giants, when we go to Detroit, have Vogelsong, who's been so good this postseason, and then their race. Matt Cain against Sanchez and Scherzer in games four and five. Yeah, in game three, the Giants are more in order for the rest of the series. Here is a 1 1 instead. Bumgarner stops and he wants a different baseball. Sometimes you, that ball becomes so slick, you feel that, and obviously, best to get rid of it. Berlin went only four innings. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Young. Left side. Crawford stays down on it, gets the out. And what a job tonight by the 23 year old left hander, Madison Bumgarner. Seven shutout innings. And our Nikon replay. We focus on the Tigers who have lost two on the bases. Fielder at the plate. Infante caught stealing when he left too soon. Cabrera with a line drive that was smoked but caught by Pablo Sandoval. It's been close, but no runs for Detroit. Down one game to nothing. And here in the top of the seventh inning, Bumgarner, after the leadoff walk, gets Fielder to hit into a 1-6-3 double play. Let's now go to the public editor is still in the ballgame, and he deals low with pitch number 109. The ball one to Pence. Well, speaking of defense, Prince Fielder is back at first base, and part of Hunter Pence's game is the push bunt to the right side. One ball, one strike. He has struggled for a game for a game and a half. He's 0 for 6 with three strikeouts, and has not looked good against Doug Fister. Nine of 54 this postseason is Pence. And now he's in the hole one and two. On deck is Belt. The bullpen is Smiley and Dotel. Bottom of the seventh inning, no score, and that is just down and away. Pence is a free swinger, was able to lay off two and two. The next. That's foul. You got the left handed hitting belt, and then Blanco, then Crawford. And that's why the Tigers have Bruce Smiley up yet again. Here's a 2 2. Ground ball, base hit, left field. And Pence is on to start the seventh. We'll see if that's it for Doug Fister. That base hit will chase the Tiger starter. Gets the game scoreless into the bottom of the seventh. He survived that line drive that caught him on the right side of his head. But he leaves with a man on nobody out. And the lefty Drew Smiley takes over. Most. The two shutout innings allowing just a hit. And the extra inning win. Ball one up and away to Brandon Belt. Is it a surprise that he's not bunting? No. He has never laid down a sacrifice in his professional career. Yet he looks down at Tim Flannery, the third base coach with the go-ahead run at first. Nobody out. Here comes a 1-0 pitch. Down and away, 2-0. Left-handers hit 224 off Smiley, who was on the DL two times this season.
Santiago Casilla getting ready. Hunter Pence wants to run. Belt comes up empty, two and one. Good pitch to hit, two and oh. Knew the fastball was coming. The ball a little bit low. Probably ball three. Here is a 2-1 pitch from Smiley. That's right side foul ball. First base umpire, Field and Colbert right behind Prince Fielder, yelling out foul. Watch the arms go up. Foul. So the count now two and two. Belt is struck out, lined out. Now dealing with a left-hander. 2-2 pitch. Adam reaching for it again. On deck is the left-handed hitting Blanco. Giants have a bench with right-handed batters Arias, Nady, and Terrio. Switch hitter is Hector Sanchez, the other catcher. Here's a 2-2. Upstairs, a full count. Interesting situation. You have Hunter Pence, a base-stealing threat at first base. But you have Brandon Belt, who could swing through a fastball, even though he knows it's coming. So will they start Pence? Not going on ball four. And it's two on with nobody out here in the seventh inning. Now you're going to see the bunt with Blanco. And here comes Jeff Jones, the pitching coach. Took over last July full time as the man in charge of the staff for Jim Leland. I think uh, what Jeff Jones is out there to do is to talk to the infielders as much as the pitcher. If you're a left handed pitcher when you release the ball you break toward the line. Knowing the first baseman's going to follow you and the first baseman Prince Fielder has your back. So throw the ball break toward the line he's talking to Miguel Cabrera about what Cabrera does as Blanco will try to butt the ball down the third baseline. Saw that graphic game three on Saturday night on the air 730 Eastern 430 Pacific. After a travel day tomorrow when Vogelsong takes on Sanchez on Sanchez. Well, here you go no score bottom of the seventh inning two on nobody out Blanco at the plate. will try to bunt the ball hard down the third baseline to make Cabrera feel the ball. Here is a 1-0. That's ball two. And Drew Smiley has been a starter still learning the bullpen is right into the heat of this World Series as he's fallen behind Gregor Blanco who's up there to bunt. Think about where the Tigers are, Tim, in this bullpen. This is where a guy like Jim Leland earns his money as they've now had to reconfigure the back end of this bullpen with Phil Cope taking over. 
Benoit, another guy who could from the right side, even Dotel, but because Valverde's been so ineffective, it changes everybody's role down there. Benoit has the best stuff. Coke is the hottest pitcher of the left-hander. Here's a 2-1. That's low. Three and one. And the bunt is going to roll and stay fair. And the bases are loaded on this from Gregor Blanco. The Giants continue to make their breaks. We talked about it in the opening. The ball hits the bag last night. A double for Pagan. He scores, and now a ball that seemingly was going foul stays fair. Man. Now the bases are loaded with nobody out for Crawford. Ball one up and in from Smiley. Here is a 1 0 to the second baseman. Out at second, out at first. The run scores, and the Giants lead 1 0 in game two. No RBI, but the first run has crossed the plate, and it was Hunter Pence who got the inning started with a base hit. You might say, why not play the infield in if you're Jim Leland? The odds are against. So you play for the double play, even though a run will score, and even though it's the seventh inning. Now it's Terrio. Runner at third, two out. One nothing Giants. Ball one inside. Had you played the infield in in that situation, unless the ball is back to the pitcher, you're not going to get a double play. You get one out. Well, that's why Leland had the infield in double play deck and not in. You see it getting ready, it looks like, for the eighth inning. And Peralta, Garcia, and Laird come to the plate. Time called at the plate. As the Giants. Try to add to their lead. It's up to Terrio. He's two out of five, three RBIs this postseason. A strike. And it's one and one. Here is a one one. Bumgarner's night is finished. He goes seven. No runs allowed on just two hits. Walk two, struck out eight. And what a turnaround performance by the still young left-hander Madison Bumgarner. Here is a 2-1 pitch. Two and two.
is the next and just inside a full count. You saw that stat for Bumgarner. That is on the heels and it's two Octobers later of eight shutout innings in game four of the World Series in 2010. Terrio with two key hits against the Cardinals in the league championship series. A strikeout and Laird gets hit on the follow through by Terrio. That's that backswing of Terrio. Gerald appears to be all right, but the Giants strike for one. They do. They get one, and then you see the bat knock the mask almost off the face of Gerald Laird. Game two. A bunt that stayed fair, that set it up for Crawford, who drove home the first run of the night. One nothing, San Francisco, up one game to nothing, as we played through seven. Johnny Peralta first up, he's 0 for two. Strike one. This is the part of the game that you talked about leading into game one last night. The late inning options for Bruce Bochy out of his bullpen compared to the unknowns that Jim Leland has with his closer Valverde. I think the three left handers make the giant bullpen a lot tougher than the Detroit bullpen. Off the end of the back strike two. One of those left hander is is Jeremy Affel. It's out of play right side. It stays 0-2. This San Francisco team in front of these great fans have been making so much noise. Lost their first two games to Cincinnati at home. Lost game one of the NLCS here at home to St. Louis. Then they won game two. They won game six and seven. They won last night trying to win tonight. Leading by one, top of the eighth inning, the 0-2. Popped up and it's felt one away. This year, two lucky consumers won the chance to play with MLB legends through the Pepsi Max Field of Dreams program. Fans voted. The game will be played in the hometown of AL consumer winner Johnny Parati from Rochester, New York. Parati, whose friends and five AL MLB legends, will host the NL consumer winner Stephen Katchmark, Washington, D.C. Log on to MLB.com slash Pepsi Max for details. Frank Thomas, Ricky Henderson, and the shot at the end, and with one out, nobody on. The batter will be Andy Dirks. Batting for Garcia. With one out, nobody on, took the ball. Dirks had a great year with a bat, hit 322. Pinch hit last night, made it out. So 0 for 1 in this World Series, and the Cal 1 and 1. Dirks on one and one, grounds to the right side. There is Scudero, two out. And the batter will be Gerald Laird, who's 0 for 2 tonight.
Scudero, even though he's been held hitless tonight, has already factored into that relay to the plate to cut down Prince Fielder back in the second. Seems like yesterday. And he has shown great range at second base as this Giants team has gotten so much stronger up the middle. The second half of the season with the addition of Scudero Crawford's played much better at short and Pagan is a very good defensive center fielder and that doesn't even count the guy that starts the action with the signs behind home plate Buster Posey. That's a strike and it's one and one. When that tag was made by Posey on Prince Fielder in the second inning, nobody realized that that play would be paramount at this time of the game. Here's a 1-1 ground ball to short. That's Crawford. And that's the end of the inning. And more good work from this Giants bullpen and more frustration for the Tigers tonight. Bottom of the eighth inning rolls in. Giants bat, game two, leading one nothing. Jim Leland wants Pagan to bat right-handed. First pitch in the dirt. Then you've got the right-handed hitting Scudero. And the switch hitter Sandoval, all six of Pablo's home runs this postseason have come batting left-handed. Two and zero. Oh. If the Tigers don't rally in the ninth, here's a two zero. Oh. High from Smiley, three and zero. Oh. Ball four. And the second walk handed out by Smiley, who asks where that missed. And it's our Nikon replay, the difference in this game. The run that scored in the seventh. Base hit by Pence after a walk, the bunt by Blanco that stayed fair. That low to the bases and the double play ball off the bat of Crawford. Played it the only run of the night. I think Jim Leland's leaving Smiley out there because he knows Scudero's going to bunt or he's going to take a chance on that. Now he wants Gerald Laird to talk to Smiley to get the right hander in the bullpen a chance to get warm. Here's Drew Smiley's reaction after that walk. Asking where the pitch missed. It missed evidently low. You have to believe we're going to see Dotel in this inning. Yeah, but you don't want to bring him in to Sandoval, probably. Right. You want the left-hander against Sandoval since he homered three times from the left side last night. Sergio Romo getting loose. And no sign of a bunt by Scudero, and shouldn't be that surprising. He is over three tonight, but because of that combo of Scudero and Sandoval in front of Buster Posey, the way they've been swinging the bats, Bruce Bochy will take his chances. Now he shows and he bunts in the air. Back and out of play, the count 0 and 2. If Scudero bunts, gone down to second we had a meeting with Jim Leland before the game he said now I'm in a position where I'm going to have to walk Sandoval in certain situations and pitch to a guy that led the league in hitting and likely MVP the course, Buster Posey behind him of course the bunts off now with two strikes scooter has been too hot Smiley steps off Bochi has had a hot hand 
in that dugout making decisions with his staff. That is just high. Smiley, I'm sure, feels like he's getting squeezed. Ball one. So the rookie left hander is being tested here in the eighth. trying to will that thing fair. I don't know that he ever dropped the bat going down the first baseline. He's got Pagan at first. Nobody out in a one two count. Just like Gregor Blanco willed that bunt fair. He had about forty seven thousand helpers here. Here's Scudero and his reaction with that ball going down the corner but foul by about 10 feet a one two got him looking and a big strikeout for Drew Smiley trying to keep this a one run game one of the rare Smiley still in the ball game. Sandoval, the switch hitting third baseman, will dig his way in. His damage, the power has come from the other side of the plate this postseason. But Dotel is still down there getting ready with Posey on deck. Runner goes. And a Stolen base for Angel Pagan. How could Gerald Laird make a better throw? That throw was right on the money, right on the shoelaces, and Pagan with too big a jump. That for Angel Pagan is his first steal of this postseason. He did get in there, and with that stolen base, everyone in America can get a free Doritos Locos Taco. On Tuesday, October 30th from 2 to 6 p.m. at any participating Taco Bell location. So there you go. Now first base is open and there's the intentional walk to Sandoval. And Buster Posey who led Major League Baseball when he hit 336 during the regular season. Will come on to hit. But Dotel will come out of the bullpen. That's a third walk issued by Smiley. Jim Leland will make the change. It'll be a double switch. Pitcher spot is due to lead off in the ninth inning. Dotel will come into the ball game out of the bullpen. And the reaction from Pagan calling time after the steal. Good throw by Laird, but a stolen base nonetheless. Pitching change. The stadium ready to erupt. Another foul. That was a mistake. That was a hanger right there. A spinning slider. Look at Laird. Sitting way outside and had to reach back to his left. Gotell got away with one there. Octavio ready with another. On 0 and 2. Fly ball into right center that's going to be deep enough Pagan tags it's two nothing a 
good at bat by Hunter Pence, who fell behind 0-2 and, and got enough on that fly ball to right to score Pagan to make it 2-0. And that's going to be it for Dotel. Phil Cope with Belt coming up. First and third, two out. Pagan crosses the plate. He started this inning with a walk, and Pence did his job. 2-0 Giants. Five games. In game five of the NLCS in St. Louis, as Phil Cope takes over, he's had a great postseason, no runs. Two saves, this is his eighth postseason appearance this year. First and third, two out. Strike one on Belt. But from game five on, I mean, they've gotten the pitching out of their starter. They've gotten great work in relief. They've had timely hits. They've had some power from Sandoval. And now Sergio Romo, who we talked to back in the fourth inning, is getting ready to come in and try and get a save and put the Giants up two games to nothing. He will have at least a two-run cushion. Here's an 0-1. What a good play by Laird to save a run. Two in a row. The first one, he smothered. A tougher play right here. The slider. Good play by Gerald Laird. Laird almost changed the entire dynamic of this inning by making a great throw on the stolen base attempt by Pagan, but Angel got in there. That was a very important stolen base. Here's a 1-1. Belt lays off again. It's 2-1. That made Jim Leland walk Pablo Sandoval, and then Dotel came in the game, and he walked Posey, and that set it up for the sack fly. A walk by Smiley when he took over in the seventh. The runner at first, nobody out. So, wildness out of the bullpen for Detroit. It's cost him. Here comes a 2 1 pitch from Cope. Strike two. Laird makes two good plays in the dirt, and that's his payment. Right off the mask. Pope has that exaggerated move to come set and then takes an extra breath. It's not too far away from a ball. But if he does it every time, it's no ball. That's his natural delivery right there. That extra little bounce, and that is just outside a full count. That is an interesting point, though, Joe. He does it every time it's no ball. But if he delivers the ball without doing that, it would be a ball. Can't deceive the runner with different ways of coming to the stretch. Three, two. Runner goes in a swing and a miss. Struck him out. But in the inning, the Giants get a run driven in by Hunter Pence. Big stolen base by Pagan pays off. 2-0 into the ninth inning as Romo will take over. Full of late here at home. He's into his eighth postseason game. Joaquin Arias takes over at third base. He'll bat in the number nine spot. The pitcher hitting third. And Quentin Berry is first up for the Tigers, trying to get something started. First at bat for Barry, who was five out of 19 this postseason. Dealing with Romo, who in 2010 got into only one World Series game. And he hits the outside corner, strike one. The Tigers aim get Cabrera to the plate, because if he hits in this inning, he will at least represent the potential tying run. Two up fourth. The 0-1 pitch from Romo. 
In the air to left. That'll carry to Blanco. One out. Still only two hits all night for Detroit. Here comes Austin Jackson, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Jackson takes a strike. The Tigers were shut out only twice during the regular season. That is the lowest total in the big, in the big leagues. They were shut out in the division series against Oakland. Wicked pitch, strike two. That's Romo at his best. Slider low and away. I think Jackson gets another one here. And Jackson lays off ball one one and two. Since the first of August here at home in San Francisco Sergio Romo grew up a Dodger fan. Has not allowed an earned run. With one out. There it is again. Two down. And that pitch is just filthy. Slip sliding away. And now it's up to Omar Infante to get Miguel Cabrera to the plate. In the ninth. Fonte out of the way of ball one. Omar has one of the two hits tonight for Detroit. The triple crown winner is standing near the on deck circle. The 1 0. 2 0. For the starters, Fister was good. Bumgarner was better. Seven shutout innings from the left-hander. He struck out eight. Infante was taking 1-0. He'll be taking again here. Two and two. Two one slider with a two run lead. An idea of how he relies on that pitch.
The Tigers will go home down two games to nothing. Take this for what it's worth because it hasn't happened since 1908, but the Tigers have never recovered from an 0-2 series deficit. Craig, the margin for error was razor thin tonight. The Giants didn't make any mistakes. The couple the Tigers did make came back to haunt them. Well, that's exactly what's going on. And at this time of the year, Mickey, you can't have those things happen. Uh, but you got to give, you got to tip your hat. And I know we keep talking about tipping our hat, but Baumgartner, I mean, he was outstanding tonight. Well, Mario Rada, certainly no disrespect to the Giants, but I'm not sure many people thought the Tigers would be coming home without a win. No, and the reason for that, Mick, was they had their pitching set up because they had the long layoff. They had a chance to throw Verlander in game one, and they had a chance to throw Fister in game two. But for me, this has come down to the Tigers' three, four, and five hitters just not getting it done. They've stranded 11 guys in this series, Rod, and that's just not going to cut it. And also give Bruce Boshi a lot of credit. He set up a couple of left-handers. At the top of that rotation, knowing that the Tigers aren't as good against left-handers as they are against right-handers, he had Linsipkin come in in last night's game. He did a marvelous job in relief of Barry Zito. Everything has gone right for the Giants so far. They are just simply rolling. Hopefully the Tigers coming home can slow down the Giants. And now arguably the Giants' two best pitchers are on deck for games three and four in Detroit. All right, let's give you a look at tonight's game highlights. Presented by Wall Side Windows, it was a beautiful night for game two in San Francisco. And the Tigers uh, had a chance to strike first in the second. Prince Fielder on first, nobody out. Delman Young hits one down the left field line, takes a funny bounce off the wall, and Gene Lamont is going to wave Fielder home, but the relight and the throw home is on the money. Fielder is out at home. It's a good call, but Craig, should he have been held? You know what, Gene, Gene was being aggressive here. The big fella was getting around the bases, but I don't think you want to make the first out at home plate, Mick. No, I don't believe you do. Uh, that was the first out, and it cost the Tigers dearly. A scary moment now here in the Giants half of the second. Gregor Blanco with a shot right back at Doug Fister. Hits him in the head. Ball flies all the way out the center. Uh, look at this again. Uh, he can't get the glove up in time. Fister took the brunt of it, but shook it off. Said he was okay. Remember where he was. Remember what his name was. And stayed in the game and pitched well. Got locked up in a pitcher's duel, as a matter of fact. Fister facing Buster Posey in the sixth. We'll give him the fly out to Delman Young in left. And Fister had blanked the Giants through six. Madison Baumgartner, however, was just as good. With Miguel Cabrera at first and no outs in the seventh. He gets Prince Fielder to hit one right back to him. And he turns the easy 1-6-3 double play to keep it scoreless going into the seventh. After a leadoff single by Pence and a walk by Belt, Gregor Blanco drops down a great bunt. Rod, what to do, what to do? Uh, Gerald Laird made the right decision. There's no way that he can wheel and turn and throw Blanco at first, out at first base. He and Cabrera are hoping that ball went foul, but it stayed fair. Yeah, and uh, no outs, base is loaded. Next batter, Brandon Crawford, it's a chopper to Infante. They turn the double play, but that scores Hunter Pence, and the Giants had a one nothing lead. They would get one more on a sack fly in the eighth to make it 2-0, and Sergio Romo comes on to finish off the Tigers in the ninth. Infante pops out the first to end it. 1-2-3, two, 2-0 two, the final. 2-0 the series now in favor of the Giants. As we take a look at tonight's Honda game summary, just two hits for the Tigers. That is a season low. Not the time for the offense to go ice cold tonight. They struck out nine times, and Madison Baumgartner, he was good. Seven innings, gave up just two hits and struck out eight. All right, so Craig Mario and Rada join us once again now for tonight's Motor City Breakdown. And guys, I want to go back to the second inning. Prince Fielder thrown out at the plate with nobody out. Rod, that's a cardinal rule violation, isn't it? Well, no doubt about that. And what Craig said earlier, Gene Lamont, no doubt, was trying to get a run on the board. As we can see, uh, the Tigers are struggling mightily trying to score runs. But let's take a look at this play and revisit it. Take a look at Gene Lamont here for me. Here's the key of the play for me. As a third base coach, you have to do everything that you could possibly do to come down that third baseline toward home plate as far as you can to give yourself an out. Look and see where Gino is right now. He's not down the line very far. Had he come down further, he may have been able to see Blanco in left field. He may have held up Prince Fielder, and then you don't have the out at home plate. But the Tigers are trying to score some runs. I know what Jim Leland's going to say. He will say, show me a third base coach that never, ever gets a runner thrown out at home plate, and I will show you one that's not very good. But in that situation, he probably should have held up Prince. Right, now, let's not put it all on, on Gene here, because the, 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 the Peralta, who's on deck, there's a rule of thumb that every time that the ball is hit, first of all, you get you move the bat out of the way for the guy that's coming in. And then if you're up there close enough, you're gotta, you've got to tell him where to slide. You're either telling him, hey, inside, outside. In this instance, 
Peralta got a really good view here because he stood and he was a fan. He was watching. This is when you have to tell this guy, hey, get down, Prince, left, left. And he might have been able to make a really good slide and, and, and be safe. Guys, the other thing I think as well that might have gotten a little bit lost in this play was the double cut by Scudero. The initial yeah. throw from the left fielder missed the initial cutoff man. Scudero was the second cutoff guy right behind him, right behind the shortstop. Crawford made a nice throw to the plate, and that turned out to be the difference in the play. And Scudero just seems to be right in the middle of everything. He has done very little wrong in this series offensively and defensively. Yeah, right. If he's not making a difference at the plate, he's doing it in the field. Uh, let's go back to the Giants the first run of this game, guys. What about keeping the infield at double play depth there with the bases loaded in a scoreless game in the seven? Don't you have to come in there and, and make the play at home on that? Well, I think you got to take the outs. I mean, for me, you, you're not going to, with this offense and, and how they're, what, what they're capable of doing and that scoring runs, that's unfortunate they're not being, they're not able to at this moment. I'm, I'm taking the double play. I'm getting the two outs, and hopefully we can, you know, score runs. I mean, you got to score one run to win anyway, Mick. So I'm taking the run. I'm taking the outs. I'm also uh, playing them at double play depth. I mean, that's just a situation right there where uh, you can't put it on Jim Leland. You, it's the seventh inning. You do have the bases loaded. There are uh, some managers that may have uh, chosen to play the infield in and get the out. But who's to say that the ball is going to hit, get hit directly at Omar Infante? I play two there and hope my offense somehow, some way. Uh, can put a run on the board. No, well, I can't. I mean, the bounces or the bunts, as the case may be, continue to go in the Giants' way. I mean, Mario, could you believe Blanco's bunt stayed fair? <laughs> I could not, but I think Gerald Lair, as Ross said a little bit earlier, played that ball correctly. I mean, it looked initially like it might roll foul, and that's the only chance. I don't think he would have had a chance to throw him out. So he made the right play, but as we have said over and over, Giants getting some pretty good bounces in this series. And unfortunately, guys, lost in all this was Doug Fister's performance tonight. That, that Blanco shot off his head. Certainly scary <laughs> in the second. But, I mean, he stayed in there, and he was good and solid throughout the night. Gave the Tigers everything they could have asked for. He took a bump. That was just a bump because this, uh, this dude is tough. I mean, think about it. I mean, this is a line drive off his head, and it didn't phase him at all. And he came back out. I mean, he was stay, stayed out there, and he started dealing. He was painting on the inside, throwing a really good changeup. Give Fister a lot of credit. He knows the severity of these games, and he knows how important he is to this team. And he stayed in there, and, and he toughed it out. Well, one thing about Fister, I mean, we knew that he would go out there. He's pitching at home. He's from Northern California. Uh, lots of family and friends in attendance. And when he went out there, he really made some guys move their feet early in the game with some really good, firm fastball. Look at how he turns the ball over out of his hand. That's how he gets some of the movement with that real good swing back fastball. Greg Maddox uh, made that pitch very, very famous. And something else that he does, he changes the eye levels. He threw backdoor breaking balls front door breaking ball. The Giants really didn't do a whole lot against Doug Fister, and we've seen Doug Fister really deal a lot down the stretch for the Tigers. Unfortunately for him, there were no margin for error. He couldn't get any run support, therefore Jim Leland was forced uh, into going out and getting him after he threw well over 100 pitches, but uh, he did not disappoint at all. He was very, very good here tonight. Yeah, he had gone 12 and a third in the playoffs without giving up a run until charged with that run in the seventh inning tonight. But, Simo, i got to ask you about this Tigers offense right now. I mean, Madison Baumgartner was 0-2 at home in the postseason with an ERA just under 10. His confidence was shaken, <laughs> but I mean, it certainly seemed to grow the longer the Tigers continued to swing and miss tonight. Well, I think he was effectively wild today. I mean, if you look at some of those swings, of guys, he was throwing pitches that were up and out of the strike zone and guys were being over aggressive. They were chasing some pitches for me. Would have loved to see them try to get, make him throw some pitches, get him in good favorable hitting counts. But it seemed like everybody, Mick, they were 0-2 in the count, 2-2s, two where you're at the pitching discretion. He can do whatever he wants. He threw really good slider down, and they were chasing him. When you get in good hitters count, this is when you're able to drive the baseball. And unfortunately for the Tigers, they were in a lot of pitches hit count where he elevated, he went down in the zone, and he kept this Tiger team off balance. Yeah, Rod, you got to make him work a little bit, though. I think he only went to three three-ball counts all night long. And he wasn't very good as far as the first pitch, uh, pitch strikes were either. I mean, usually uh, that's a recipe for success when you have a guy that's throwing a lot of first pitch strikes. But he done none of that tonight, but he was changing eye levels. He kept the ball outside. He kept it down at their feet. For me, it looked like one of the few times this year the Tigers lately, they were pressing for me. Yeah, well, and the pressure builds now as they come back home down 2-0 to the San Francisco Giants in this World Series. Lots to get to tonight. More with the fellas still to come here on Tigers Live. But up next, uh, we'll take you back out to San Francisco. John Keating in the clubhouse gathering postgame interviews with the players. Jim Leland's postgame press conference on the way as well as the Tigers head home in an 0-2 hole to the Giants. People smile. He's been doing a good job. If you look what he did in the Yankee series, he was pretty impressive. Two, two different times out. He got some big outs for us. 
So, I mean, that was a no-brainer for me. Uh, uh, but you're right, probably if Valverde was really close and good, I probably would have gone with Coke in that situation. But, you know, Smiley did fine. He got a little bit wild there, but he got a couple big outs. He got the double play ball and, you know, gave us our shot at it. Uh, so, you know, we walked the guy later on to give him the add-on run, which was a re real close pitch. And, uh, you know, with Dotel and Posey. And, uh, you know, but I thought, you know, Smiley did fine. He, you know, the first couple pitches he threw, he was totally out of whack. I mean... But, you know, he gathered himself and ended up throwing the ball pretty good and got the big double play. Buster. Jim, in the seventh inning, when they had the base loaded, nobody out, uh, you had a couple choices. Can you run through your thinking on infield and infield back? Yeah, well, we felt like um, we played double play death because we felt like we couldn't give them two runs. That's why we did that. We got the double play. To be honest with you, we were absolutely thrilled to come out of that inning with one run. You know, absolutely thrilled. I mean, we had to score anyway. You give them two, it makes it a little bit tougher, obviously. But uh, we felt like we didn't want them to open it up, and we got the double play ball, and we got out of it. Uh, it actually worked out really good for us. Tom? Jim, when you got to the mound with the Fister incident, what did he tell you? I'm sorry? When you got to the mound after the ball hit Fister, what, what did he tell you? Well, if you'd have been out there, it was, it was something to see. Because the trainer was saying, where are you? Uh, San Francisco. Uh, what game is it? Game number two. Uh, on and on and on with a few of these things. And actually, I don't want to you know, make light of it, but it was kind of comical, really, because Doug was right on with everything. But I was scared to death when it happened. I didn't really realize exactly how it hit. It kind of grazed, the, like, I want to say, the side of his head, the back of his head. And it was a scary moment, obviously. But, um, you know, he was fine, and it's, you know, it's a little scary for a manager because you never know if there's a later reaction with something like that, you know. Yeah, I, did he say that he didn't feel it? No, you know, I don't think he said he didn't feel it. He just uh, was pretty blasé about it, really, and just said that he was <laughs> fine, and uh, you know, he went on. But you always worry about, you know, something like that. After it happens, maybe you're all right, and then you come sit in the dugout, and all of a sudden you got a bad headache or something, then, you know, that puts a different light on things. But he, he was fine, and he pitched outstanding. Both guys did, Baumgartner and him. In the middle, in the back, Ken? Uh, Jim, just to follow on that, will Fister get any tests that you know of just to, to make sure he's okay? Uh, I would assume that, uh, you know, we have doctors with us, obviously, so I'm sure he's been to the, you know, follow my finger and all that stuff, uh, I, you know. So it's like just I, okay, I, ahead, one other question, uh, Jim. Uh, sending Fielder in, in the second there. Could just you, your you say what? Sending uh, Prince home in the second inning. Your perspective on that? Well, I tell you what. I think uh, Gene just got a little over aggressive. We haven't been scoring runs other than the final game against the Yankees, and we want to be aggressive. I think he got just a little over aggressive, and it was a bang bang play. And by the way, I did go out. Uh, you know, I thought with my naked eye, I thought he was out. But when Prince reacted, I thought, well, maybe, you know, he might have missed him. But the umpire made a great call. He, he made an absolute terrific call in a, in a big situation, a tough situation, a tough call. And he made a great call. Who else? Okay, Richard. Hey, Jim, you got a lot going on with your bullpen. What's your level of confidence in the guys you have out there now? Terrific. I thought Ben Watt threw the ball great last night. Coke's been throwing great. Porcello's thrown the ball good. Albuquerque threw the ball good. I have no problem with it at all. I mean, the game tonight was uh, two to one. Uh, the bullpen really didn't really hurt us a whole lot last night. Really, Justin just didn't have a very good game. He gave up five runs, so that means the bullpen ended up giving up three and some mixes and matches. But in the bullpen tonight, they did fine. I, I have great confidence in our bullpen. I, I, a lot of people, I think the minute you lose a quote-unquote uh, quote true closer or you think, or people think you have, then people begin to question your bullpen a little bit more because there's more conversation, who you're going to use, how you're going to mix and match. So I think that happens. Well, and there is a little disarray in that Tigers bullpen right now. Jim acknowledged that uh, if Phil Coke wasn't in the closer's role at this point, he probably would have come in in that uh, seventh inning and been the left-handed reliever at that point as opposed to Drew Smiley. Tigers uh, relievers tonight, Smiley three walks, Dotel one, it came back to hurt him. Well, for me, Mick, the story is Valverde. And when, when Valverde is right and, and Ben Watts pitching well, he pitched well the, uh, yesterday, uh, 
that's when this team's at its best. When when you got your closer and you've got your setup guy, when those guys are hitting on all cylinder, that's when the bullpen's at its best. And right now, it, it's, it is a difficult situation for Jim right now to have to try to maneuver and figure out who he's going to bring in. And today, he pulled a card on. I mean, he pulled his string and he wanted to go with smiling. And Mario, Rod, really, this is the first time we've kind of seen the Valverde situation have an effect on the bullpen as it played out in tonight's game. Yeah, I think so, Mick. You know, I think one of the things, one of the advantages San Francisco had coming into this series was their bullpen was more settled than the Tigers was. But I, I kind of agree with the skipper there. Smiley didn't pitch all that badly. He got the double play ball, which limited them to just one run. Coke threw the ball well. Benoit's throwing the ball well. So, you know, you can say because, as Jim said, your, your closer is not in that final spot that maybe it is in disarray. But overall, they didn't pitch all that badly. And it was a 2-0 ball game. You know, Jim is not doing anything differently than he did during the course of the regular season. He has 25 guys out there. He trusts all of the 25 guys, probably with the exception right now, Jose Valverde. But Valverde's been hit around in the postseason. Smiley, for the most part, as we have well documented, has been tremendous as a rookie. But he did look like he was a little shaken out there. He looked a little unsure of himself to me for the very first time. And I'm thinking about that bunt. Uh, there in that seventh inning where he sh probably should have thrown some balls up in the strike zone. He was down, and that's one of the reasons why they were at Blanco was able to get that butt down. Yeah, pressure pack situation. Those leadoff walks always come back to haunt you, and uh, they did tonight uh, for the Tigers as they fall behind to the San Francisco Giants 2-zip uh, in this best of seven World Series. Up next on Tigers Live, we'll head into the Tigers clubhouse. The players trying to explain where their bats have gone. John Keating catching up with the players as we speak. We'll bring those conversations when we continue. Lead in the World Series. Now there you have it, 2-0 the final tonight in Game 2. The Giants have played pretty much flawless baseball, which explains why they have a 2-0 series lead coming back to Detroit for Game 3 on Saturday. Bruce Bochy has pushed all the right buttons so far, and right now the Giants manager is at the podium as we take you back to San Francisco. Well, I, I thought the first inning would, would be a critical inning for him, uh, for his confidence. Uh, also, you know, just to see where he was at and, uh, and really, uh, I mean, what a job he did. And, you know, he's worked on some things. And uh, Rags, uh, Dave Rigetti, our pitching coach, uh, just did a great job getting him back on track. And, you know, had great poise out there with uh, great uh, delivery. And, and he stayed, uh, you know, right on for seven innings. And, you know, he, He's done such a great job for us. I, you know, I really thought he needed a break, and I think he benefited from it, uh, getting some rest, both, both uh, mentally and physically. And uh, he went out there and pitched like uh, we, we know he can. And over 